Welcome to The Best Medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Bradley H. Werrell, and we're here to explore options and potentials to help us grow as individuals and as a community with one another in these difficult times and challenging times. We're exploring all manner of potentials related to the human experience, physical, psychological, medical, spiritual. It's a wonderful opportunity that we now experience in this critical phase of our human evolution. And I welcome you to join us in our podcast, become more aware and identify with people who are helpful and supportive of you in your efforts as a human being on this planet and elsewhere too. We're going to be meeting people who are doing things that are widely variant from what is so-called normal within our society. In the creative space, within the social space, our common purpose, seeking to generate positive potentials to improve the lives of everyone in our sphere of influence, and to expand that sphere of influence so that we may positively influence others that are not yet engaged directly with us. That's the goal here. We will learn more about each other as we go. I wish you the very best. Thank you very much for tuning in. We're speaking with Jordan Arell. <laughs> and he's, he's doing some very interesting work, um, anti-circumcision work, intactivism, and foreskin restoration. And I'm interested in that work. And um, Jordan, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Well, it's good to be on. Glad to be here. <laughs> so the, I, the first question I have for you is, is, how did you come to become engaged in this process of um, this, this particular vein of pursuit? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, not many people seem to care much about circumcision. And so uh, where I kind of started out, uh, I was really just um, curious about it. I'd, I'd heard about it. I didn't really know anything about it. And I was like, oh, I wondered why why they do that and uh, what, what it actually is. Um, so I was about 18 years old and I, I just Googled, you know, um, I don't remember exactly what I typed in, but what what is circumcision? Why do they circumcise? Um, what are the benefits or is it good or why? why? Like I assumed it was good, but I didn't know how exactly. Uh, and after researching it, I, I started to learn that there are people who actually think that there are not benefits to circumcision and that it might actually even be harmful. Um, and the more I, I dug into it, the more I realized that there's this whole kind of crazy history behind it. And it never really was um, meant to be beneficial until very recently that kind of myth arose that, oh, they, there must be some health benefits. So they did all these studies and still haven't come up with much but um but i started to realize it's actually been done to harm my sexuality um and historically was done to do that to remove sensitivity and to prevent masturbation actually and uh learning that was like really um jarring to me because i i care a lot about sex and, and want to have a good sex life and learning that it could actually have been damaged in some way was like really shocking to me so you know, I, th I think the first person I ever tried to talk to about it was my mom and and she didn't really get it. She's actually a doctor herself and has performed a lot of circumcisions and was like, well, I guess she said she'd look into it and she looked into it and was like, yeah, I guess there's really not really any reason to do it. Maybe there's some harm, but you know, most guys are happy with it and you can't do anything about it. So I was like, sorry, but, <laughs> and, uh, and I was n not happy that she wasn't very empathetic and I continued to research more and more and the more I learned the more sort of traumatized I got by it and eventually I had to just stop researching. Well, wait, wait. What do you mean by traumatized? I'm curious about that. Yeah so um, it's there's this idea and I'm writing this book actually where I talk about this uh, that information can actually be traumatic. So for example um, it's well known in, in psychological literature that someone who um, learns that a friend of theirs or a f family member who's close to them was in like a really bad car accident mm. can actually develop PTSD from that just from learning that someone close to them had something traumatic happen to them 
So learning that something traumatic actually happened to yourself um, and watching the procedure and seeing how sort of actually violent it is and painful for the, for the baby. Um, and, and yeah, having um, this total identity shift that, oh, actually I'm someone who's, who's been sexually harmed and I'm missing out on something um, is actually traumatic, I think, for a lot of guys. Um, and so, yeah, that, um, that, that shift in identity and that um, just seeing that procedure itself is oh actually- my. Yeah, I know I've, I've witnessed it and it's like, uh, I've never performed that, never have any interest in performing that procedure. And it's like the, <laughs> the, the physician say, it's not painful for the baby. I'm like, yeah, sure. Doesn't look that way to me. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty painful. And it's like, wow. Yeah. yeah so, so uh, I see the trauma, the direct physical trauma at the moment. And they're, they're, they're like, oh, you don't remember it. Do you know, you know, but, so it's, it's like, uh, it's interesting yeah and another thing about trauma is that it's really stored in your body and um and even it's interesting because the more the earlier in life a trauma occurs mm -hmm. the more profoundly it affects you and we understand that with everything else you know if you're traumatized at three years old that can totally form your personality in a different way but mm -hmm. this event that actually happens at at birth as early as possible um and is so extreme it's it's strange that we haven't until recently kind of recognized that oh maybe this actually does have a serious effect it's like the, there's a reason that they were doing it thousands of years ago right mm -hmm. and it's like where where why and what does it do because it's it, it must do something otherwise they wouldn't have persisted in doing it right yeah that's the question it's uh <laughs> and that's an interesting question like how would you even begin to answer the question like what's the difference right like some kind of like serious uh psychological review and comparison between people who have had circumcision and people who have not yeah at, at like near birth right mm-hmm and see what see what differences there are because it's like I believe there's going to be some differences that should be measurable, but it's like okay, what does that mean? Until you look, you can't find out, right? Yeah, it, there was a, a paper published recently by uh, Brian Earp et al. Um, he's one of the authors, and it went into how um, uh, uh, there was a study. I didn't I didn't actually I just read the abstract from the paper and, and a little bit of it, but. Uh, it looked like they basically did that study that you just said and and they found that uh circumcised men are much more anxious in their relationships and have a what's called a fast style of coping mm -hmm. so that they um they it basically primes your your organism to be in a in an extremely highly stressful environment since it happens so early it's like it's mm -hmm. um it's activating that different biological pathway or or um dn mm -hmm different sort of dna almost like a opening epigenetic opening. yeah 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 something like that it's like um no oh, do, do send a reference to that paper for me because i'm sure. interested in that one this is interesting it's like oh, we'll put it in the show note yeah, and it's like it, it's just fascinating because it is it must do something it is not a benign function it has it has a it is it has some kind of momentous effect right mm -hmm. So it must have exert some influence and it's like, it's, it's not, it's not transparent. It's not invisible. It's real. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think there is a, is a definite influence. Um, it's a, uh, it, and it's definitely hard to know what that is. You know, it's suspicious that the circumcising cultures like uh, Judaism and the United States are the two biggest examples also happen to have a lot of, uh, like trauma and, and war in their <laughs> in their collective histories, um, so that's that's interesting. Um, but it's it's yeah it's it's so hard to know with that. Um, what I go into in my book is more like as an adult, you know, just learning about it, and maybe that reactivates the primal trauma too. But learning about it in itself is also traumatic because you're you know then faced with the whole society that you're. Um, trying to deal with like being in a in a genital cutting society <laughs> yeah right it's a weird thing it's like okay because what's funny is it's uh 
Judeo-Christian. I would say that, in, in, and I don't know the, the, the details of it, but I would call it a Judeo-Christian uh, right, right? Like R-I-T-E. Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, it is what we would call in uh, the, we would call it genital mutilation if it was the Muslims doing it. But, <laughs> right? And it's like, okay, I'm just saying. And, and it's like, is it, it's not an inaccurate description. I would say it's definitely, uh, it's a genital alteration by a knife. Right? <laughs> it's like, call it what you will, you know tomato tomato right it's tough man it's just, it's just no no way to call that anything but yeah genital alteration with a knife which is right. like, wow wow that's a that's a, like when you like ask the parent that one because it's an interesting thing because the other aspect of it is like uh ethical right because mm -hmm. you have a child the kid's not able to make his own medical decisions and so the parents are in the in the in the medical decision making uh capacity for the infant and now now you're you have a someone that can't give consent and the parents are giving consent in uh in in lieu of the consent of the baby mm -hmm. and it's like okay that's ethically questionable it's like okay and it's like <laughs> and they don't have very good information so it's like probably poorly informed consent and right. it's kind of like a traditional and what a weird thing to be getting it's like it's like when you get when you when you interact with people and you're, you, they're going to raise their child the way they, they want to, or think is right. Or, you know what I mean? And it's like, and this qualifies as part of that parental decision-making thing. So it's like, you're, 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 you're engaging in primal forces, which is like, okay. Um, the, the family unit, you're like, you're, you're challenging the integrity of the family unit and the mm. family decision-making processes. And it's like, wow, it's like, I, I, that's a scary place to be. That's a pinch point, man. <laughs> right oh yeah 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 it's a it's a hard um where do you get in with that i was just you know come at it with the raw information as much as i can because i'm um, trying to say like oh you don't have that right as a parent to make decisions for your child is a non-starter for most people it's like well uh you know yes they're, they're obligated to want to make <laughs> obligated to do that and it's like well how do you i guess it's you i would I guess I would approach it from the informed consent point of view and which is to make sure the parents are fully informed mm -hmm. and that's the best you can do. Cause I know like, you're not too overly aggressive about intervening between the parents and the child and you know, what they think is the right pattern of behavior. I don't, I, as, as I was trained, it was like, uh, there was some discussion about this in, in medical school and that's, you know, I don't know what they're doing now with regard to that. It's like, uh, but yeah, I just, I, I, it's, that's a process I never wanted to become involved in. I'm like, okay, that's, that's just not for me. <laughs> no, that's an interesting thing from a, as a medical provider is like, um, you're not obligated to perform any procedures. You're not, you know, you're, you're like, there are things I won't do. And it's like, okay, I won't do that one. And that's, yeah. I'm okay with that. There's other providers and you know what I mean? You can't make me and I won't. Okay. <laughs> and it's okay. Yeah. And that's like, so it's like, there's a, that's the other angle is you, you can approach the, the providers and inform the providers. And that may be a more efficient way to uh, process the information to effectively uh, modify the culture. Cause it is like a medical culture. Right. Yeah. It's so normalized. Um, I've definitely thought about it from all, all those different angles, uh, informing parents informing doctors really educating them about it and the, i mean most doctors as i mentioned don't really actually know that much about it even though they're performing it <laughs> they don't uh, understand the actual functions of the foreskin and why it's there and the the you know yeah, yeah. you're not really trained in psychology and how it might be harmful that way as well wait so. you, were, you were trained in psychology you said um i have a bachelor's in psychology i was saying doctors don't really have no, much no. training in no in psychology no, no it's awful and it's like um yeah so the the yeah the the issue is that is is um psychology it, what a strange thing though it is it's just like okay now um so so you wrote a book you also have an organization that's doing research and tell mm. us about that 
Yeah, about Foragen. Um, yeah, so Foragen is an organization who is working to uh, regenerate the male foreskin using foreskin um, using regenerative medicine. So, um, uh, what regenerative medicine is is essentially uses stem cells, uh, which are cells that are programmable. They're you know the the cells that are in a fetal tissue or um, we also have stem cells as adults still in like bone marrow in different places. It can also create stem cells, but they're cells that are able to morph into any cell because they're they're basically non-programmed cells. So with regenerative medicine, what you do is you um, you take those stem cells, you create a biological scaffold of the tissue that you want to regenerate. And then you apply the stem cells in such a way that you can then regenerate the tissue uh, onto those stem cells so that you can actually create a replica of the original organ. So you could actually regenerate a foreskin that would be basically identical to the one that you were born with. And, um, and then attach that using microsurgery and, and uh, apply more stem cells so that it will heal properly. And it's, it's quite possible and feasible that with current technology, we could actually replace a man's foreskin so that he can have all the benefits and normal sexual sensitivity that, um, that the foreskin provides. So that's, that's our goal and we are um, working towards it. We're still in the kind of research phases. We've done hmm. a couple experiments. Um, to first decellularize the tissue, which means you take a donor foreskin and remove all of the um, the cells. donor cells, so that you have just that scaffold. And um, the next phase is to actually regenerate or um, see if we can get those cells to repopulate and and make sure that it vascularizes normally and that it has all the properties you'd want the tissue to have before we actually would then transplant it. So how long have you had this organization in operation? So it's, um, it, Foragen was founded in 2010 by mm -hmm. Vincenzo Aiello. And uh, yeah, it's, so it's been around for 11 years now, I guess. I, wow. I only joined, I've been following it since 2012, but I only joined in 2006 or 2017. So I've been for about four years doing. When you say you joined, what does that mean? Uh, I joined as originally as the podcast host ah. doing that. And then I moved into doing some, some other things like events and uh, writing for them. I now also manage the email system. So oh. uh, all emails that come into Forge and I'll process and. So you're like um, the digital manager. Uh, I've done a lot of digital things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, tell me this, if you got a lot of pushback. Like uh, negative energy from the uh, efforts, um, from from foraging specifically or intactivism uh, in general with regard to the, the the whole process. Yeah, so um, I I've gotten a little bit not not as much as I would uh, expect. Um, I think it really matters what situation you put yourself in and and how you approach it with people. So for me, um, you know, when I'm trying to inform someone about the functions of the foreskin and the, the pleasure potential and the human rights issues and, you know, how it affects me or affects people, I, I try to come from it from as calm a perspective as possible. I think my training in psychology really helps with that. Mm -hmm. Just calling myself and, you know, trying to explain my experience and emotions and yeah and the facts as, um, as they are. <laughs> that, that's right. No, I think that's the right way. Cause as long, as long as you're not telling me what to do, I'm not likely to get irritable with you. Right. Right. <laughs> yes. I got, you can bring me information. That's okay. You know what I mean? It's like, the, but I think, um, I, I push your approach will definitely generate the uh, negative response when you're calling me a bad person or a bad parent, especially it's like, man, parents don't like that one. <laughs> No, they don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some people are are mm -hmm. also. It, it depends what what person you're talking to, too. I I just um try to find people who are receptive because there mm -hmm. are people out there who are never gonna That's <laughs> they're right. gonna get offended even if you start to say that circumcision might be bad. They're like, no, 
Fuck you. <laughs> I like that. That's a, that, and it is an interesting function. It is selection of the audience is important. Mm-hmm. And that, that goes to your psychology, right? It's like the, the person who's not receptive will not be receptive. And it yeah. can't make them receptive by screaming louder, right? No, yeah. They're not the, uh, they're not the early adopters. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's, so that's, a, that's, a, that's all right. And it's like this. It's like what's the, the goal is, is um, it's an interesting goal. It's like it's not a, um, it's not a conquest, right? Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a transformation through information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think if everybody understood circumcision and, and the foreskin and all the issues involved, um, you know, it's like the same way that people know what a clitoris is. It's like, right. you're not going to cut off your daughter's clitoris in, in the United States, for the most part, at least. I mean, some, some FGM it's uh, upon. still happens, but. Oh my, yes. Yes. It is just frowned upon. It's like, wow. And it is, um, it's okay gloss over that one i suppose i did just to just uh yes but how how we treat our children right i'm very interested to to this study this the um long-term effects of that uh right because i'm curious as to as to because i know it has some significance i know it it is it's quite a it a pivotal function but it's like, it's seemingly invisible. You know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of like a clear box that's so clear you can't see the box. Yeah. And it's like, what it was, there's a difference because it's there. And, and it's like, the, I would, I'm interested quite in the measurement of the differences of the long-term impact of it. And it's like the, I'd say you, you have to kind of like, look at the whole thing from a social perspective to the individual perspective, the biological perspective, like even um, disease potential, like the, every uh, every layer, there's different layers of the of the impact of the circumcision mm-hmm. throughout yeah. life. And it's it's not it's a complex thing, <laughs> right? A holistic o- overview of something like that, and it's like no 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 small task. So you've been doing this for many years now. Yes. Yeah. I really started um, doing activism more heavily in 2017 when I started with Forage and, um, and I've done a lot of other, I had a, have a YouTube channel that I've made a couple hundred videos on. Um, I've done stuff with a, a local uh, advocacy group when I was in Colorado who did kind of policy advocacy and as well as like doing stuff at uh, gay pride parades and uh, baby fairs, just handing out info. Um, I did have done what else wrote this book on healing trauma um and i'm starting a new organization now that's kind of trying to do more community organizing just getting people online together and talking about the issue and creating media around it create podcasts like this and um so doing that now and yeah um uh, foragen of course as i mentioned so right pretty (laughs) well-rounded right you're you're doing all kinds of different things yeah yeah i'll um come back to the point you mentioned about how it affects people because i do think that is interesting too um from a long term even if you know the person has no knowledge of it they're happy with their sex life they think they're you know just fine and couldn't care less um i've actually noticed that i uh uh sometimes I'll be able to tune in and I'll, I'll just have an intuition. I'll be like, Oh, I, I know you're circumcised. Oh, I, no know, I, I know you're intact. Yeah. <laughs> just from the personality and I, no I haven't kidding. had to be wrong yet when I've, when I've had the intuition, I won't say I can do it. That's, with a, that's a weird question to ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't mean to be prying, but yeah, well, I <laughs> <laughs> just saying, it's just, it's just an unusual one. It's like, oh, it's funny, funny. Yeah. So that just, it, it, I, I studied, uh, I've been studying um, psychology closely, probably, I, uh, my uncle was a psychiatrist, right? Mm. And um, I became interested in it through his suggestion. I started studying hypnotherapy and, and uh, I've been doing, you know, doing a little bit of that and studying that. But then I, I became quite closely uh, associated with a Jungian psychotherapy group for about a year. 
And I enjoyed that and learned a lot. And it's like, okay, so it's like, well, how do you engage with psychology, man? Psychology is very ethereal and it's all <laughs> abstract, right? And it's like, okay. And it is, there's no small thing to say yeah, intuition because that's like, yes, that's a real thing. And it's like, it's like, it's like interesting that you bring it into the conversation like this because it's like, um, you have to develop an, like, you have to allow yourself the sensitivity to be open to the idea that you're going to have an intuition of such mm -hmm. a nature, right? Because mm -hmm. if you don't establish, the, so like, like an intention, I don't even know if intention is strong enough or is the right word because it seems too strong because it's like a, it's like a acceptance as opposed to um, aggressive reaching out to get something. It's like, allowing the impression to form so you you would say um uh, like a certain softness of the of mental structure to allow the impression to 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 just look at the impression that's generated by what's coming in and and formulate your uh, intuition of it right yeah yeah exactly because it's, like, it's like this like the idea of even thinking of what you have intuited never crossed my mind ever <laughs> and i'm like that like you i tip my hat to you because that's you're just like a, that's an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anything I feel like that you uh, are working with a lot, like oh yeah, uh, like I work with this a lot. Right. Uh, you start to you, your unconscious mind is developing a database of all mm -hmm. the information around that subject that you're not even really you know we have a very small um, set of things that we consciously process. Right. And there's so much that's going on in our mind that we're just not aware of at all. And so somehow, uh, yeah, I guess I was able to pick up cues from. Sure, sure, I'll, I get it now. Like um, the, so you got a bachelor's in psychology. Did mm. you do do postgraduate work? No, I uh, have applied for an MS MSW at a few schools, and um, I may go do that this fall. So that's interesting. It's like social work is very weird work because it's like okay, they just know everything about like. Nothing in particular, but everything. <laughs> it's a very weird thing, man. It's like um, I talk to the social workers, and the social workers are like, they're um, they know about all the like social resources, right? Like how how do you get stuff done in this this local environment, mostly, right? Like what what resources can we do to help you? What do you need to help you that are not like medical? Mm -hmm. And it's it's right. quite interesting. It's like. I'm like, and I don't, we are not trained how to interface with these people. Not well, not well at all as medicine, medicine, phys, you know, physicians. The, mm -hmm. um, and I, 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 I've, I recently have created a, an um, intention in my mind to, to uh, develop more adequate um, interface with the social workers. Cause I'm like, okay. Cause I, I know, I don't know what I'm doing with regard to the, I don't know what they know. I just, like, they know everything about just, what's going on or something you know what i mean and yeah it's like, it's like very valuable information because i'm trying to help a patient do something and it's like well i don't even know if i can write a referral to a social worker you know what i mean it's just right. like we have them in the hospital they have them in the hospitals and they're that's commonly they'll have them visit with the patient in the hospital before they you know split um get discharged and it's like the the but i'm a i'm a i do uh, outpatient medicine and it's like, okay, so, so uh, that's one of the things I'm working on. I like, I reformulated that intention, like probably today, I believe it was because it's like, okay, this is a weird problem. I got to find someone who knows everything about whatever's going on outside here that I don't understand. Yeah, that's what social workers are, are known for. We do everything with everything. It's a, it's called a, um, well, there's the micro macro and um Mes micro meso and macro levels so you work with individuals you think about families and groups and organizations and then you also think about society at large and you have to know about all of those <laughs> so that you can work weird. on every single level like i say yeah that's what that is the know everything about uh, i don't know what it's just the know everything <laughs> you're like what, there's no way to define what you the limit what you're supposed to know about in social work is why i say everything about nothing yeah. in particular is like but you got to know everything about it because you're like you're all it's like connections between funct forms and social functions and and al allow those connections to be made with individuals or groups to help them 
flourish in the, in the environment they're in. What is this interesting work, man? So is what, so you when did you start applying for this? That was um I actually started applying last January. <laughs> I was going to go this fall, but then decided not to with the pandemic and everything. I, um, yeah, so just uh, reapplied uh, December and and uh, a little bit uh, a few weeks ago in <laughs> January. Well, I want to ask you another question, which is a weird question. This is like um educational question. Mm-hmm. Like how do you determine which social work uh, educational um, uh, provider, right? The educator, the uh, university or whatever uh, educational system that you're going to get the degree from? How do you pick which one is the right one? That's a good question. <laughs> um, I mean, the easiest way is just to look at um, the ratings systems they have online. Uh, US uh, News, I think is something like that has like a rating system for schools. That's it's just peer um, peer ratings is all they do. They send out a survey to each school and ask, what do you think of all the other schools? Oh, okay. And based on research quality and quality of students that they're aware of, I guess, or what, however they're aware of it, they give them ratings. And um, then it's how much the school costs is another big thing. Sure. Like uh, I'm, I applied to Arizona State University and University of Southern California, and I did get into both of those, but it's like, okay, USC is 10 times the cost of Arizona State University. <laughs> But ASU is online and, you know, USC is at this big fancy school that's cutting edge and whatever. So it comes to, see, it kind of comes to this is like uh, my, my attitude in going to medical school is like, I'm happy they'd yell at me in, you know what I mean? <laughs> Cause let me in so I can get my piece of paper, punch the ticket and move on. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, I, I, I was had, always had an attitude of education, which is like this, um, <clears throat> which is maybe a weird one. Um, is I will make use of my education in ways you don't even imagine, mm-hmm. right? And it's, and it's I, I just educate me, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and give me um, starting enough to start, mm-hmm. right? That, that is acceptable. And it's like, so that's, that's kind of why I asked the question because it's like the, 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 my presumption will be that they'll all give you the essentials to start. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it, it comes down to how you, creatively engage the material that determines the value that you will bring to the society by your actions right yeah very true yeah i think it's i mean there's studies showing that right that um that if you go to an ivy league school or if you just go to like a normal old school it doesn't actually matter if you if you got into both schools then um it's really just the fact that you got in that's important (laughs) it doesn't matter which one you actually go to um, so I, I, I like that perspective. It's definitely, that's you know, it's challenging though. Cause you're kind of looking to knock your head against the wall. So if you do that, cause you're like, okay, you're just, you, you're not, you're kind of cut against the grain mm-hmm. because I, I, I don't know. I was just, um, I was, uh, talking to some people recently and it's like the, the issue is, is, um, it's like, there's, there's a, there's a certain expectations and like the social programming. I, I, I think that institutions, the social institutions are, uh, they're like uh, social promotion schemes more than meritocracy as they present themselves to be. Hmm. That makes sense. And it's like, okay. And uh, uh, my attitude is black sheepish already from the get go. Okay. And it's like, okay. Uh, and I, I regard it as a character a characteristic i won't say character flaw i will say a characteristic right it's a feature right yeah. and but it is like uh head butter is a hard road yeah <laughs> you're kind of a head butter i can tell because you're the, the work you're in is like okay that's unusual right it's like <laughs> your butt heads it's like with with strong like like social forces that are strong mm-hmm. right Oh yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of people who are uh, not not happy to hear that circumcision is genital mutilation. Um, <laughs> that that uh, you know the billion dollar medical industry is one. The um, J- Jewish groups have presented quite a lot of opposition. <laughs> they aren't happy about about that message either. Um, 
Mm. And yeah, society in general is, is pretty, I think people in general are just like, don't want to hear that, you know, men who are circumcised or have partners who are circumcised, it's like, doesn't, doesn't feel good, doesn't make people happy. But it's right, you know, right. No, you're kind of traumatizing them because you're like, you were traumatized when you learned about it, right? It's like, it's like, right. yeah, I, uh, you're traumatizing me by even having this discussion. My God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's why i didn't uh, talk about it for the first five years actually <laughs> that seems reasonable i'm like okay i get it it's like okay like uh what's what's funny is like it's other layers of trauma it's like you're traumatizing my whole religion right mm -hmm. like oh my and it's like wow that's like rubbing people's fur the wrong way it's very very black sheepish man <laughs> yeah yeah the religion thing is definitely a hard one it's like there's no way to win there no then, there's no winning that one it's like hmm, <laughs> got nothing to say except hmm, what no what does that mean i don't know it's just it's, a, it's an interesting and it's like like they, the next question was like uh, well it's okay like i would look at it like uh when you talk about something you do right and it's like how emotionally invested in the process are you you know what i mean does that make sense? Because it's like, okay, they're like, okay, like, look, and you're not going to change it in your lifetime, right? It, not the whole society, right? You're not going to radically transform or revolutionize the society to make it a, a genital mutilation free zone, right? It seems it's unlikely. A, it's a hard, it's it's a hard goal, but I'm hoping to, you know. All right. <laughs> hope, all right but the to. issue you see like this, it's all how much emotional, um, how many emotional chips are on the table? right like how invested are you in the end game right mm -hmm. what how much passion are you going to play on that one right yeah well that's why um that's one reason i'm so invested in the cause actually is not just because it has affected me so profoundly but because there are so many other intactivists you know right activists i don't know if we said that term yet no, but no we don't we didn't define children it. intact <laughs> yeah, it's intact again, because i overspoke you there i apologize it's all good intactivists are activists who are have the goal of keeping children intact and not cutting their genitals in any way male female or intersex and um yeah what i find with a lot of intactivists is that they're also extremely motivated because um they feel so profoundly harmed by this mm -hmm. and um yeah in the same way that i'm i've felt very traumatized by it and and it's become really important to me um I find that most intactivists, you know, they have like a, a Facebook profile that has like a little thing on it that says, you know, boys are born, born perfect or, or keep children intact or something like that. And um, they're often ex extremely committed to it. Um, in fact, the only thing that I think stops a lot of activists from doing more is that they're so traumatized that they, they can't even engage with it because it's just too painful for them. Interesting because uh, it is, it's like, um, so trauma-based motivation right yeah. yeah i mean it's like that seems like reasonable to me it's like uh right and it's like the, the interesting function of it is like you're you're um there's a like a stockholm syndrome -y thing or it's not quite stockholm syndrome but it's like yeah. this. it's like you're 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 seeking to um change the behavior of those who are the ones that are the one like the ones that traumatized you mm-hmm what a traumatic experience that must be. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, uh, that's a, it, there's a lot of psychology you could go into that's really interesting with that because it's, um, I think a lot of the, um, the traumatic response is actually, there's this thing called repetition compulsion okay. where you have a, uh, a desire to actually re-experience the traumatizing event on some mm -hmm. level or to, to reconfront the traumatizing event and to gain mastery over it. And so in a way, that's what intactivists are doing every time they try to talk to someone about circumcision. Um, if they feel they've been harmed by it, then it's like, it's almost like they're- By proxy though, right? It's like they're, right. they're, they're engaging with it by proxy for the infant that is in question. Yeah, exactly. Wow, wow, wow that's heavy duty, man. It's like, <laughs> that's like, so a special kind of person wants to engage in that. It's just, uh, I can see that being very, very irritating, like uh, trying, emotionally trying. 
Oh yeah. 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 That's why, like I said, I think a lot of people just don't even, <laughs> you know, a lot of activism ends up being online. Um, that's one way that makes it a little bit easier, but uh, even so it's like it conf confronting it all. It's, it's so much easier for a lot of people to just block it out and not even think about the possibility that it might be harmful. <laughs> I mean, for a lot of people, it's like, Nope, I'm fine with it. It's good. <laughs> I understand that. And I'm like, um, no, I mean, my, I just looking at my reaction, I just say like, okay, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Right. And it's like, okay, that's, that's not much of a contribution. Right. It's, a, it's more than none. Right. I, I'm not actively contributing to what you would regard as the problem. Right. And it's like, that's okay. That's, a, that's a good start. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's the, that's the very, uh, first thing that everyone needs to do is you know refuse to participate in it if everybody did that then that would be that'd be it <laughs> it's over right and it's like what a, what, a, what a strange cultural um, artifact right strange cultural artifact and it's like well yeah, yeah and it's like you're in an interesting sp spot because you're like studying the social work and uh and uh psychology which is like that's the human experience right there mm -hmm. the whole human experience and then, and then engaging these social forces that are like, okay, wow, that's, that's challenging. Cause they're like the, the bedrock, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's such a, it's such a personal issue for so many people. Um, you know, it's, it's your, it's your private parts of your body. It involves your parents. It involves your religion for some people, uh, your sexuality, your, your, your male identity. It's like so fundamental. Um, you really, I think, have to have some knowledge of psychology to navigate it effectively. A lot of activists you see are, are can be very um, aggressive or very, um, mm. they, they're just so angry in it. And oh, yeah, yeah. And That's not a good like, start. Yeah. <laughs> you just said it the anger rather than the, the actual message. So the, the, um, do you train uh, activists? Um, that's uh, that's something I'm looking to do with this organization that I just started called um, uh, Intact Community, but I've tried to do that a little bit through all the videos I made on YouTube as well. And oh, that's interesting. It's definitely. But it's interesting, and that's like then it's like okay, it's like then it's like what coordinated behavior after that, right? So yes. it's like strategic. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What a strange business you're in, man. That's just it's just very <laughs> unusual. It's like okay, I'm like. Like, uh, well, yeah, when I, um, I got John's letter email that was describing what you're doing, I'm like, wow, this is going to be an interesting conversation because it's, it's very outside the scope of normal conversation for me. <laughs> yeah. but, okay. And I'm good with that. I'm like, well, this is, this will be interesting because it's like, well, um, it is, it's, it's that unusual and it's, but it is, it, I, I regard it as very reasonable and, um, uh, um, interesting and 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 potentially valuable so it's like well there's certainly much to talk about here but it is and it's just so it's like a landmines everywhere i think on this one it's just people are just uh emotional emotional landmines everywhere oh yeah yeah it's it's a scary topic to confront with people i think that's one of the things that makes it difficult to talk about too is that um people you know when you start the conversation you never know how someone's going to react and sometimes it is a little bit volatile <laughs> oh that's people, not good yeah they they don't they they really don't want to hear it um or just as just as annoying as when people shut down completely is the other problematic response because then there's no you know you say information and they're literally just silent or yeah. they say huh and they don't want, like they don't even want to engage <laughs> right you know that's a, the 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 interesting function there it's like uh it, it's a psychiatry joke right like how many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb mm -hmm. okay it's like this it's like they, they say the answer is one but i believe the answer is none but the the only thing that matters is the light bulb must really want to change itself <laughs> right Yes. And so the, so the, the, the issue is this, it's like, you're, you can't, you, you can't change the light bulb. doesn't want to change, man. Right. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the trick is how, knowing how it's like, how you have to like this sensitivity with the intuition is like, you have to know when it's just, you, you're, you're wasting your air. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's exactly it. Right. You have to. And you're causing a negative response if you try any harder. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I get it. And it's like, you just let it be. Right. Yeah, that's all you can do sometimes is, you know, bring up the issue. Maybe they've never heard about it before or, or they're just not interested. Maybe it'll come up again. Maybe as the issue starts to shift more, they'll be more open to it. But if you start, you know, with just the people who are open to it, that's a lot of people. I'd say most people, maybe 70%, I don't know, are, are open if you approach it right, at least. That's right. And um so you go Focus to the fertile ground, the fertile ground to to plant the seeds of, of, of knowledge and see what happens, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's yeah. a, that's like it's a very interesting process. It's a it's a organic unfolding of uh, consciousness. As you, mm -hmm. you know, that's as good as it gets, man. If you're aiding that process, that's good enough. Yeah, for sure. Yep it's it's all about um. It's, it's really just all about reaching people. That's, that's what you have to figure out how to do is um, <laughs> how do you find those people, reach them and, and deliver the message. That's right. That's right. Well, you're doing good work, man. I like, uh, I, I appreciate all, all that you have done and all that you're doing. And, and uh, I'll also wish you uh, good luck getting the social work degree and, and moving forward in that direction. I, we'll see where you go with that because it's, uh, I don't think it's going to be like, a straight one. It's not a straight shot. You you zigging and zagging all over the place, man. I think you're a zigzag all, and you'll do something that is um, we'll all be surprised by and figure out what's what's the significance of it because it's like you're gonna creatively engage with all that information and process it in a way that we are all um, will be amazed by. <laughs> right. I am the creative type. Yeah, it's a it's a wild ride sometimes, but it's uh, worth it. <laughs> It's rough. It's the creative type is tough because you, you get you get knocked around a little bit because you have to you make a lot more mistakes because you're not on the narrow path. You're not on the the straight, well defined path. You're on a, a rocky one that's requiring your creative uh, engagement. Exactly. Yeah. Navigate it, and it's like yeah, yeah man. Well, you, wonderful. Well, I thank you for joining me, Jordan. Thank you, Doctor Well. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll chat again, perhaps, and I'll, we'll, I want to find out about your social work experience. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. This has been great and appreciate all your awesome questions. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye now. All right. Send later. me that, send me that dumb study. Okay. Yes, I will. I will Good man. You. All right. Sure. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode of the best medicine podcast with Bradley H. Werrell, D.O. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe below, either over there or over there. Also, if you're interested in a medical consultation with myself, there's also information below.